Hello everybody, welcome back to week 6, chapter 3. Uh, we just finished taking our, our, our test 1, which was for chapters 1 and 2. And now we are ready to view or to learn about adjusting accounts. And so in chapters uh, 1 and 2, you learned about recording transactions in tabular form. You learned the accounting equations, which is assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. And you learned about the expanded equation, which is uh, basically expanding owner's equity to include owner's capital minus owner's drawings plus revenues minus expenses. And we learned about four financial statements, which included the income statement, the owner's equity statement, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flows. And we learned how to record accounts using the T accounts, which remember it looks like a T with the name of the, of the account on the top. And we learned about debit and credit, which means debit is the left side and credit is the, lot, it's the right side. Please remember that debit and credit is not positive or negative. And that is because different accounts may cause the debit to increase or decrease. And likewise, different accounts may cause the credit to increase or decrease. So it does not necessarily mean that debit is positive and credit is negative. Both can, both debit and credits can increase and decrease depending on which account you're dealing with. So all you need to know is that debit is left side and credit is right side. We learned about general journal entries and the general ledgers. And based on those um, general journal entries and ledgers, we compile a trial balance. <coughs> so now moving on to chapter three, let's start by... Um, considering a business and, and let's pretend that in your business you need to provide financial reports to different entities in order to provide an overview of the financial status of your business. So this feedback as an accountant can be given to entities um, to include business owners, creditors, or the IRS. And each of these entities may require reports for different periods. For example, a business owner may want to know how his or her business is doing on a monthly basis. Perhaps creditors want to see financial reports on a quarterly basis. And we all know that the IRS wants to see the business revenues or losses on a yearly basis. And that is done by filing an annual tax return. So we can see a pattern here. Basically, an accountant must provide reports for different periods de uh, depending on the entity that is requiring it. Therefore, we have the time period assumption where accountants divide the economic life of a, of a business into artificial time periods. So how do, we, how do businesses determine the time periods? Well, it depends on the business. Some businesses run on a fiscal year, while others run on a calendar year. And you're wondering, what is the difference? Well, a fiscal year begins with the first day of the month and ends 12 months later. So, and it does not matter what month of the year the period begins. So, Let's talk about Golden West College, for example. We run this business on a fiscal year. It begins July 1st, and it ends June 30th. So July 1st is the first of the month, and it ends 12 months later, which is June 30th. And a calendar year is also a 12-month period, but it begins on January 1st, and it ends December 31st. <clears throat> Another concept that accountants need to consider is the timing when a transaction should be recorded. So, for example, you are the owner of a store that sells clothes and you accept payment by cash or credit. Credit meaning credit cards. When you make a cash sale, you receive the cash immediately during the sale, 
but when a credit sale is made, it may take several days for you to physically receive the cash from the credit company. So when should you record your revenues? When you make the sale, regardless of when you receive your cash, or when you actually receive your cash? Well, this is when accountants must decide whether to use the accrual basis accounting or the cash basis accounting. Under the accrual basis accounting, companies record transactions in the period in which the event occurs. This means that the companies recognize revenues when the service is performed rather than when the cash is received. So under the cash basis accounting, companies um, record or recognize the revenues when the cash is received. So which one should you use? Well, the accrual basis accounting is a method that is in accordance with GAAP. And remember that GAAP is generally accepted accounting principles. This method is best for medium and large companies because often these businesses have many receivables and payables and small businesses that have few receivables and, pay, uh, and payables can justify using the cash basis accounting. Okay, so another layer to consider is to determine when to report revenues and expenses. And to help accountants determine the timing, consider the, the following principle. We have the revenue recognition principle, which recognizes revenue in the accounting period in which the performance obligation is satisfied. <coughs> so in the textbook, for example, <coughs> we are given an example for a dry cleaning business. <coughs> And what the example talks about, <coughs> excuse me, what the example talks about is when you drop off your clothes to get dry cleaned, <clears throat> you usually can get your clothes back in a few days. You may pay up front uh, for the service or you may wait until you pick up your, cl your clothes or your, or your items and then pay at when you, um, when you pick up your clothes. Under the revenue recognition principle, the dry cleaning business would recognize the revenue when the obligation is satisfied. In this case, when the clothes are cleaned. Doesn't matter when you picked them up. So let's say you dropped off your clothes on June 28th and they were cleaned on June 30th. But the clothes were picked up and paid on July 1st then the revenue will be recognized when the obligation was met, which is the day the clothes were cleaned. Therefore, you will recognize that on June 30th. Under the expense recognition principle, on the other hand, um, it recognizes or ties expenses with revenues. So continuing with a dry cleaning example, suppose you have an, an employee who cleans your the clothes for the business. And you pay this person every two weeks, on the first of the month and the 15th of every month. So this person's payroll is an expense tied with the revenue generated for dry cleaning clothes. So when would you recognize this, this expense? Well, under the expense uh, recognition principle, um, you should recognize the expense in the same period when the obligation was met. So why is all of this important? Well, in this chapter, you're going to learn how to make um, adjusting entries. In order for revenues to be recorded when a service is performed, and for expenses to be recognized in the period in which they are incurred, companies must adjust their entries. We classify adjusting entries as either deferrals or accruals. For deferrals, 
we deal with two subcategories, and they're down here. Prepaid expenses, which are expenses paid in cash before they are used or consumed. Best example for this is to think of your car insurance. You can pay monthly or you can pay for an entire six months or an entire year up front. And let's say that you pay for the entire year. This is prepaid expenses. You paid for a service that you will not consume completely in one day or in one month. In this case, you will consume part of the service every single month. Then you have unearned uh, revenues which is when you receive cash before services are performed. Like in the dry cleaning example, if your customer pays when they turn in their clothes, then you have unearned revenues because you have not cleaned the clothes yet. Then you have accruals, and the two subcategories are accrued revenues, which are revenues for services performed, but not yet received cash or recorded. This is when you dry clean the clothes, but the customer will not pay until the clothes are picked up. And you have accrued expenses when you have incurred expenses, but not yet paid, as in the employee example, uh, that was cleaning your clothes, and you will not pay that person until two weeks later. So all of this information may seem confusing and you may be experiencing cognitive overload at this point. So let me try to simplify this for you and consolidate all of this information in this table that you see here. Defer means to postpone or delay. So deferrals are expenses or revenues that are recorded at a later date than when cash is exchanged. So to adjust deferrals, um, we deal with prepaid expenses and unearned revenues. Again, to adjust deferrals, and deferrals means anything that um, is postponed or delayed, we deal with prepaid expenses and unearned revenues. So how do we adjust prepaid expenses? And why do we need this adjustment? Think of supplies. A company purchases supplies for an entire year, let's say. And this purchase increases assets, right? Remember, we learned that when we purchase supplies, we deal with the assets accounts. But the business will not use all the supplies in one day or in one month. Um, we classify adjusting entries as either, so, let me go back. So, we will not use all of the supplies in one day or in one month, correct? So, the supplies should last all year, or we hope that it will last all year. So, in chapters 1 and 2, you recorded supplies and assets. Let's say it was $3,000 worth. And at the end of the month, you used $200 worth of supplies. If we do not make an adjustment to record the use of $200 worth of supplies, what's going to happen is that we would be overstating assets, which is right here, why it's um, telling you how the accounts, what happens to the accounts before it's adjusted. So we would be overstating assets because we no longer have $3,000 worth of supplies. And why don't we have $3,000 worth of supplies anymore? It's because we use $200 worth of supplies when in reality, um, and because of that, in reality, we only have $2,800 worth of supplies. Likewise, expenses will be understated. If we do not record the use of $200 worth of expenses, we're going to be understating our expenses. So how do we fix this? Well, just follow this illustration here. We would adjust prepaid expenses 
by debiting expenses and crediting assets. For unearned revenues, think of a situation when pay payment is received before the service is performed. If this happens, liabilities are going to be overstated and revenues are understated because we cannot account for the revenue until the service is performed. So we adjust the entry by debiting liabilities and crediting revenues. Now for accruals, remember that you will deal with uh, accrued revenues and accrued expenses. For accrued revenues, this is when you have performed the service but have not been paid yet. And this causes assets to be understated. Okay, and revenues um, are understated as well. So you adjust the entry by debiting assets and by crediting revenues. And lastly, we have accrued expenses, and that is when you have expenses, but ha that uh, you have expenses, but you have not been paid. You have not paid them yet. This causes expenses to be understated, <coughs> and your liabilities are also understated. So you debit expenses and you credit liabilities in order to adjust the entry. <coughs> so once the adjusting entries have been recorded, then you could prepare another trial balance, and you already know how to do that from the previous chapters. And the new trial balance is going to reflect all the adjusting entries that you just made. So your balances on the trial balance are going to be either a little bit increased or a little bit decreased, depending on what, what um, accounts you were dealing with, whether it's a prepaid expense, under revenue, accrued revenues, or accrued expenses. And that is basically it for this chapter. It's just adjusting entries. And what you're going to find is that the bare bones of this course was learned in chapters 1 and 2 which was the biggest chunk of information that you learned. And from now on, each chapter is going to focus on adding something um, else to the equation. Um, but you're going to be dealing with the same concepts. You're going to be using your, your um, tables to know which accounts are going to be affected. Is it going to increase assets? Is it going to decrease assets? Is, is it going to increase supplies? Is it going to increase owner's equity or decrease it? And basically, um, the same principles apply, but then now you're going to be learning, like for example, in this chapter, how to adjust accounts, and later on you will learn other things. So let me go over an example uh, to help you with your homework. And consider in this example, we have prepaid insurance for $2,000. Remember, prepaid insurance is when you decide to let's say buy a, buy a vehicle and you want to pay the insurance premium for an entire year because you don't want to deal with paying it monthly. So when you pay in advance for a service that you haven't received completely, remember it's prepaid insurance. And then we have supplies. Remember that you may want to buy supplies for an entire year for your business, but you're not going to be using them for the in your all of the supplies will not be exhausted in one month so in this case we have supplies and the account has two thousand dollars so we have two thousand dollars worth of supplies and then we have equipment equipment is a, let's say it's a computer or a cash register um, and that's worth thirty four thousand dollars and then we have unearned service revenue and unearned service revenue, remember, is uh, when they pay you in advance, but you haven't earned that yet because you haven't performed the service, and that account has $9,900. So that's our example. And what the homework assignment is going to ask you to do is to uh, do some adjustments. 
So what I did here is I copied the same account over to this slide so you see the information that we're dealing with. And then I'm going to provide you with what one of the problems may ask you to do. In this case, insurance expires at a rate of $300 and you're supposed to do an adjusting entry. So what does the statement mean? Insurance expires at a rate of $300. Well, you paid in advance for an entire year of your policy for $2,000. And what this statement is saying is that insurance expires at a rate of $300. It means that your monthly payment, if you would have decided to pay this monthly, it would have been $300 a month, okay? And it may not equal to $2,000 a year, okay? I'm just giving you an example. So don't call me out on this uh, on an email saying, well, $2,000 is not a year. I'm just giving you an example. Okay, so you pay $2,000 for this policy in advance, and the insurance expires at a rate of $300. So every $300, every month you're going to be using $300 worth of that insurance. How are you going to adjust that? Well, if you look back over here, those are prepaid expenses, okay? You pay for something in advance that you're not going to be using all at once. So what's going to cost these prepaid expenses? It's going to cost for assets to be overstated and for expenses to be understated. So what you need to do to adjust the entries is debit the expense and credit the assets. So what you're going to do here is you're going to debit insurance expense for $300 and you're going to credit the asset, which is prepaid insurance, for $300 as a credit. And that is going to be to record insurance that is expired. Okay? And that's all you have to do. The second thing they may ask you to do in the homework is it's going to tell you supplies on hand totals $1,000. What does that mean? Well, you bought $2,000 worth of supplies. And let's say that at the end of the month, you do an inventory check and you realize that there is only $1,000 worth of supplies on hand. That's what it's saying. That you consumed $1,000 worth of, expense, uh, of supplies and now you only have $1,000 left of supplies. So we need to uh, adjust that. Why do we need to adjust it? Because it's a prepaid expense and it's overstating our assets and it's understating our expenses. It's going to be the same category. So how do we adjust that? By debiting expenses and crediting assets. So we go back and we're going to debit supplies expense for $1,000. And we're going to credit our supplies account by $1,000. And that is to record supplies used. And that's it. That's all you do for this particular example. Now, equipment depreciates at $400 a month. What does this mean? Well, we have equipment for $34,000. Okay. And this is a mistake right here. This should be $400. I don't know why I had it at 1000 So let me see if I can fix it right now because it's going to confuse you. Okay. So what this is saying is, Let's say you bought $34,000 worth of computers. Or let's just pretend that it's a very expensive computer and it's worth $34,000, which is very unrealistic. But just for sake of simplicity. And what this is saying is that every month, this computer is going to depreciate $400. So it's no longer, a month later, it's no longer going to be worth $34,000. It's going to be worth $400 less. And the way we do that is 
again it's going to be um, using the uh, prepaid expenses so what we're going to do is we're going to debit the depreciation expense account by $400 and then we're going to credit our accumulated depreciation because it's accumulating depreciation at $400 a month. So let's say that this problem was asking you for two months to, re to adjust two months worth of depreciation. Then you would double this at 800 and 800. Hope this makes sense to you. And that's to record depreciation. Basically, it's just saying that your equipment now is worth $400 less and your equipment, um, likewise, accumulated depreciation of $400. <clears throat> and the last one is, during March, services were performed for two-fifths of the un unearned service revenue. Services were performed for two-fifths of the unearned service revenue. What does this mean? We have unearned service revenue for $9,900. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be grabbing this $9,900 and you're going to be multiplying it by two-fifths. When you do that, two-fifths times $9,900 is going to give you this number right here, $3,960. And that's what you need to adjust. And notice that it says unearned revenue. So let's go back to our table. Unearned revenue. What happens when there's unearned revenue? Well, our liabilities are overstated and our revenues are understated. So you fix that by adjusting the entry, by debiting liabilities and crediting revenues. Okay. <clears throat> so our liabilities is unearned service revenue. Why is it a liability? Because a customer paid us or paid your business for a service you have not performed or completed. That's a liability because you have their money and you haven't given them their service or their product. <coughs> so you will be debiting $39.60 to fix that. <coughs> and then you're going to be crediting service revenue by $39.60. Why are you crediting service revenue? Because you're now you're receiving that cash, right? And that is to record revenue for services provided. And that's it. That's all you have to do for your homework. This week is <clears throat> same deal as last as any other week. You have homework to do based on your lecture and your reading assignment. And then you have a homework assignment and you have a quiz. And that is all due by March 16th, which is next Wednesday <coughs> at 11.59 p.m. If you have any other questions, please let me know. I'll be glad to help you. From now on, we're going to be working from Wednesday to Wednesday. And the reason I'm doing that is because We've experienced difficulties with Wiley over the weekend. I don't know if something's going on over the weekend. Nobody's checking the system. I don't know. But um, they guaranteed me it was not going to happen again, but you never know. And I do, I do not want to stress you out by having something be due over the weekend and the system's not working and we have limited access to technical support. So... Uh, what I'm going to, what I've decided to do is every Wednesday, I'm going to upload the, um, the new folder for the week and it's going to be due the following Wednesday. So you have your weekends to either enjoy or get your work done. And then you have a few extra days during the week to get this done. Let me know if this works for you or if it doesn't, but, uh, I'm going as we go, adjusting what we need to do to adjust in the course in order to accommodate the needs of the course and the students that I have in this um, semester. So let me know what works and what doesn't, and I'll see you next week. Take care.